Hello everybody and welcome. In this video solution, we are going to talk about the solution to the problem, orderly cube. It's a hard problem on lead code and it's one of those trick questions for which you need to know a certain way to approach them. If you look at the code for this question, the solution is going to be extremely, extremely simple. But to get to that point, we first need to build up our intuitions. Step one. Uh, what is meant by lexicographically small string that we have to return? Let's take a couple of examples. Let's say that we have ABC and ACB. Which of them is lexicographically the smaller one? The way we do that is by asking this question. We want to find the first differing characters values and compare them. So in the string ABC and ACB, we'll go ahead and first start off with A. So we have two pointers, both to A. Now, both of these are the same, so we can't exactly make a comparison here. We'll move one forward for both of them. Now we're pointing at B and C. Now we can just compare them and say that B is lesser than C. And so <coughs> the string ABC is lesser than ACB. Let's take another case where we have a triple A XA, which is going to be lesser than triple A A. And that's because of this first differing character X and A here. The value of x is greater than the value of a, so this will be a string greater than this string. Okay, now we want to talk about the starting case, which is the case of k equals to 1. This is where we are starting our considerations and let's say for a given s, cba, we want to find its answer. Now, c, b and a's are like, even this, it's not exactly uh, visible, which of them are the lower and higher ones. We'll have to do some computation, so we'll just look at the numbers instead. Okay, converting that we get 3 to 1 and we'll use that for the rest of the explanation. So we have 3 to 1 here. Now k equals to 1 specifies the boundaries, basically saying that from index 0 all the way up till index 1, whatever characters are in the middle can be get kicked out. So in the case of 3 to 1, we can select 3, which is the only element here, and we can kick that out. What we'll get is 2, 1, and 3 kicked out, so 3 will be at the end. Similarly, in this case, we'll select 2 and kick that out. So we'll get 1, 3, 2. The case of k equals to 1 is actually quite trivial. You just need to enumerate over all the possible cases, which are going to be n in length for n equals to the length of the string. And of all of those cases, we can simply find the minimum. Now, this is a, such a simple case that we're going to go ahead and uh, write code for it because the second case is much more interesting. Okay, if k equals to 1, we want to do some computation. Let's go ahead and find the length of the string first. And we want to have an answer as uh, like the answer string. So we'll initialize that with s as well. Now we want to iterate over all of the elements. And uh, basically, we want to iterate over it n times. So for underscore and range of n, now we'll iterate over it n times. Each time, we'll pick the first element, kick that out, and put it at the end. So we'll have a new s, which is s of 1 till the end. Basically, 0th element is not considered here. And then 0th, consider, 0th element is considered after we've considered the rest of the string. And we have the new s in hand. So we can do uh, answer equals to the minimum of new s and the answer itself. And at the end, uh, we can just have s equals to new s. Now we want to return the answer here. We want to do a quick sanity check. Let's do this test case and we'll check this out. Okay, ACB looks correct to me. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and write else pass. Now let's go on to the more interesting case. Okay, we have the case 5, 3, 4, 2, 1. In this case, we have k equals to 2 so that we have k elements inside of this yellow boundary which means that we can pick either of these two elements and select them and kick them out. In a case I kick out 5, uh, I get 3, 4, 2, 1, 5. And a case I uh, kick out 3, I'll get 5, 4, 2, 1, 3. This means that we have sort of this branching out of these ideas, which probably means we could use recursion. But uh, at the same time, k equals to 2, which means that there are two branches here. If k equals to 3 or 
n in general, we can have a branching factor of order of n. And so for each level, you'll have n branches, which for each node, you'll have n branches, which is not a good idea to implement. Okay, let's continue and maybe we'll find something else. So I want to look at this case here, 5, 4, 2, 1, 3, and uh, I'm going to kick out 5 again. So we'll have uh, 4, 2, 1, 3, 5. That's fine. Now what I want to do is I want to select the first element, kick it out. Then we'll have 2, 1, uh, 3, 5, 4. Then I'll select the first element, kick it out again and again and again till I get 3, 5, 4, 2, 1. Okay. Why is 3, 5, 4, 2, 1 interesting case? See, because earlier we started off with 5, 3, 4, 2, 1. This case we have 3, 5, 4, 2, 1. Writing both of them, we can see that the rest of the elements remain the same, but these two elements got swapped. What this means is we can swap characters within the boundary for k greater than or equals to 2. So any two elements that come inside of the boundary can be have like we can do some computation which can swap them around. Okay, uh, that's fine. But uh, let's also look at this tree again. So 5, 3 got swapped to 3, 5, that's fine. But we also have 5, 4, which means that we can also swap around 5, 5 with 4. We have 4, 2, so we can swap around 4 with 2, in this case 3, 4, so 4 with 3, so on and so forth. We can do this for every single case. I'm not kidding, we can do this for every single possible pair of characters because we have this boundary set to 2 and we can always do some sort of kicking in such a way that gets us all of the combinations. So we can swap out all of the characters for all of the k's greater than or equals to 2. Now let's remind ourselves uh, what was the original goal of the question? It was to find the best ordering, the best lexicographically smallest string, which means that in the case of 3, 5, 4, 2, 1, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the sorted string. And if we can ensure that somehow we can always swap two characters and we can sort, that should remind you of an algorithm called bubble sort. In fact, that is the idea here. Uh, we can actually do bubble sort in order of n square time and that will get us the lexicographically smallest string. It follows all of the rules that we have set up up till now. But we also want to look for one more thing. Um, if you look at these cases, it's not exactly important how many steps you took, how many steps you took to make that swap or make that change which means that we only care about the initial and the final cases, the initial string and the final sorted string, which means that the idea of bubble sort is in the right direction, but we can simply use merge sort because we care about only the initial and the ending points. So we can use merge sort as well as bubble sort and any other sorting algorithm. Merge sort because it's the fastest one running in order of n log n time. And that is it. That is the core observation of this part. For all of the k's greater than or equal to 2, we can always, always swap all of the characters. We can swap all of the pairs of characters, which means that we can do a merge sort here. So, uh, sorry, yeah. Here we want to return the string dot join sorted. Sorted what? the original string. So this sorted will actually produce a list of characters which are sorted in order. And we can sort of join them both, uh, join all of them, and it will get us a string at the very end. And so we can submit this here and accept it. Okay, great. So we are done with the solution for the problem, orderly queue. I know this involved this neat little trick of finding k greater than equals to two case. For k equals to one, it was still fine. It was quite intuitive. We could figure that out. But k equals to 2, hmm, like to select and know which branch to go isn't exactly trivial. And this is why I label it sort of one of those questions, which is trick questions. You need to know the idea or the way of working around these problems beforehand. Anyways, this solution runs in uh, order of n log n time for uh, k greater than or equals to 2 and order of n time for k equals to 1. So worst case time complexity order of n log n. 
space required by merge sort is also the highest so it will take the order of uh, n log n time again for this k equals to one case the space required is actually constant okay anyways this is it and uh, yeah thanks for watching